Well, here's a template, template bed. This is actually the board off the original roof board rack system. Uh, some extra boards put out so that I could judge the edge of the tire, get the entire distance across, um, fuel tank where it hangs to get the proper angle on the intake hose, uh, and of course the uh, proper amount of block up to clear the top of the fuel tank there and to basically get the right materials to line up. Uh, put a mark on the truck, take this board off, and work with the steel. All right, run to the metal shop. Got all the metal materials. Somehow that all goes together to, I uh, hope, fit a flatbed with a few four storage boxes. You wanna see the super duper plan set? Yeah, ready? Oh, see if I can get it down there. There you go. Ooh. There you go. All drawn up in AutoCAD, SolidWorks, engineered, load calcs by the engineers. Nope, just scratched out on a piece of paper. A couple days later, the bed's on, the main bed part, and the main frame. I've got uh, a box started here. It's gonna come up, come down diagonally, and we'll lid the flips up. Anyway, got the design planned out, grinding away, welding steel. It'll be days of this stuff. All right, here's the, close to the end of the third day of working metal. The racks go here. I'm gonna re-drill the holes, gonna reuse the existing bars. They aren't in place right now, obviously. Uh, decks laid out to panel with diamond plate material. This uh, front bar here and the diagonals to support it are gonna be encased into a box lid that pops up and hooks up. There's another rack that attaches to here. The next thing I wanna do is add a box, utility box down below um, off to the side so that I have both a, a bit of a mud guard to the tire and a bit of under, under the flatbed storage so I'd have down to three boxes. The wedge shape box is the main one and the utility box on either side in front of the wheels behind the cab. But the uh, main frame is in. I think I went through that before. Since then I've kind of relocated a gas tank nozzle. That's kind of a, a tricky one because the bed needs to be raised enough to give it a elevation change for the gas to flow downhill and yet you don't want it down so far that it's going to hit the tire and a lot of a lot of angles to figure out. So I think that's right. That piece is going to hang in there. This piece is going to support a plate to protect the the hose from any rock damage from tires. These boxes are in. Uh, they're going to be clad in probably a diamond plate, uh, at least on the face and a removable back so I can get to the air filter back there, which is all covered by wet towels, of course, because I'm welding, and to fit the uh, two bolts in here that need to be accessed. Back here is the license plate frame, and this has to, license plate actually has to hang down a little bit here because we have to get in there and access that key which drops the spare tire down. So, one tricky aspect. Uh, I put cross members in to support more of the frame. I'm going to put tabs in to support some of the, the panels that go on. Uh, box on the driver's side. Uh, it's a little longer, 14 inches. Brings it a little closer back, but we don't have the gas tank a hose to worry about on this side. So. so here's the package inside. Light's not as good. But I pulled the front plate or front bumper system off and I put a grill plate in to protect the radiator. Um, a little harder to see back here, but these crossbars are for the back window. Uh, this piece fits on top of that wedge box frame and becomes part of the rack. This is the hatch door. Hard to see, but again, that's the back that comes off the back deck, the top bar, and these brackets hold a roller that runs across there. So there's a roller that feeds kayaks up onto the rack a lot easier. I did it with my other vehicle and it's a game changer for loading heavy objects, kayaks, and long boards on board. So most of the work's been done inside 
and I'm going to move this product out so it gets painted before it gets installed. A lot of paint work coming up and hopefully the weather changes because it hasn't been very good lately. Here it is with the rear bar fitted. These pieces here are from the old truck up to here and these bars are new, capped off, uh, rectangular tube. I fitted it in there loosely. I'm going to have to weld some nuts in there so that I can attach it on and off as needed if I wanted to have a pure flatbed and not a rack in the way. Uh, lesson learned on the over bars. Here's the original ones which I cut off at that point to put the rectangular tube in. Uh, it was never stable enough to hold a lot of stuff so I'd drill holes in it and mount this piece of plywood over the top of it and that caused a lot of rust and corrosion down through the center of the pipe. So wherever possible, or at least on this new design, I haven't added any holes and I don't plan to add any holes to any of this tubing so that no water can uh, transmit down into the tube. These brackets here are for a roller, roller bar system and should meet the front front bar which joins that that wedge box right there goes over the top so here's the muffler dry fit laid out on the floor measured the distance from end to end and the rise that i get with a 15 degree angle bolted in there all mandrel bending 2.25 should 2 have 2.25 diameter pulling off an old two inch diameter flow master, which is of course a lot smaller. Uh, catalytic converter, that's coming out too. Just going with straight mandrel bent pipe all the way down, fit that in. So here's the original muffler, what I have on there now. It's uh, not stock either. That's a flow master 40 series. Uh, this strap, this straight bar down here is clamped to the pipe to give it a straight dimension so I get the overall rise here. That's about the same as seven and a half inches. Underneath runs through the cat converter which is coming away and runs straight off the headers. I pulled a measurement out to 81 inches there or I'm going to cut it off and join the new stainless steel to the old pipe. The Borla 2.25 exhaust system installed. Got the clamps, but they're not perfect. The butt clamps do leak a little bit. And it's not, there's a little bit of tick down there. Not entirely happy with it. Maybe I'll find a welder and uh, have them weld the stainless together. Because obviously my welder won't do that. Uh, it sounds nice. From inside the cab, it's fairly quiet actually. And outside it sounds a little more throaty. So I'm happy with it. I went a little oversized on the muffler, but it uh, quiets it down inside the cab a bit and uh, still has that throaty roar, so pretty good. All right, there's a thousand little steps that take anywhere from two minutes to half an hour to do all the paint prep work. But the front bumper has been sandblasted out. You see it kind of 
patchy. I just kind of pepper blasted it to give it some texture so that the next coats will grab to it. I've added a grill to the front. Um, I'm letting it dry in the sun. This flatbed has all been washed down with a degreaser soap and I think I'm going to spend a little more time on the sides to try to smooth those out. It's a little bit rough uh, from the rust and I've got to mount the running boards on the side. Running boards have been welded up and drilled. Uh, I'll probably wash those with the degreaser soap and paint those as well and then drill the holes in the frame to mount them in. I was a little worried about drilling the frame until I noticed how many holes there are already drilled in the frame for purposes I have no idea what, but uh, the entire frame is just peppered with holes, so a couple more won't hurt. And it's a nice sunny day for the first time in at least a week, so I have a good afternoon for spraying. All right, all the uh, little parts and pieces are primed up, at least. Um, the back deck rack, or the back rack with the rollers. The hatch lid is internal, so it's white. Um, heavy duty primer coats on everything external. Front bumpers, running boards. Now the flatbed stands out because it's new metal. I did it in white, um, older metal I did in the heavy heavy metal primer in brown. So a bit of overspray I'll take care of tomorrow and I'll paint it all black eventually.